Hey Disney, we could have used the message of this movie last year. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to an all new talk in movies. As always, I'm your host, the real Gino, Gino Reynolds. And today, we're going to be talking about the newest Disney animated movie that was first delayed and then it was released in theaters and on Disney Plus for the premium price of $30, which I guess, uh, like Milan, when you pay that $30, you get to keep the movie until you get rid of the Disney Plus service. So today, we're going to be talking about Raya and the Last Dragon. I will warn you, in this review, uh, there's going to be some minor spoilers. I do have to talk about some plot points uh, and all that. So if you don't want anything spoiled about this movie... I'll just put it this way. Um, If you're comfortable going to the theaters to see it, go see it. Uh, If you're not comfortable going to the theaters and can afford the $30 price tag to watch it on Disney+, Plus, do so. This, I have a feeling, is going to not only go down as one of the best animated movies of this year... Uh, I'm not sure what all's coming out this year, but I have a feeling that it might even be considered one of the best movies this year. Um, I haven't got to see a ton of stuff this year because, I mean, it's it's only March. But right now, Raya and the Last Dragon, despite my issues with it, uh, is is been one of my favorite movies this year so far. Uh, so yeah, I, I I guess what I'm saying is watch it, watch the movie if you can. Watch Raya and the Last Dragon. Now, on to the review. Uh, What this movie is about is a land called Kumandra. And from what I understand, it's uh, based on a lot of Southeast Asian cultures. It's not, this is not our Earth. It's it's like an alternate Earth. Uh, In a way, this movie, in in some ways, uh, including the first outfit we see, uh, Raya in, uh, kind of reminded me some of, uh, The Last Airbender. Uh, no, not the, <clears throat> not the crappy, uh, movie version, but the good cartoon version. Um, and, and with the way things end up with the lands being split and everything else. But we have this, this one land called Kumundra, and they are, uh, thriving, um, under their friendship with the dragons. Uh, but then an evil force comes to the land called the Droon, and we find out where they come from later. Uh, the dragons have to sacrifice themselves. There's only like five of them left, and they sacrifice themselves to uh, trap the rune or the Droon in the uh, just away. They they trap them away, and they sacrifice themselves, and there's no more dragons. But the dragons leave. Um, a like an orb with them that's like the last remaining piece of dragons and the lands end up splitting and it splits up into different territories and most of them are jealous of the heart territory because they are the keepers of the orb um raya's father uh the chief of the heart he wants to bring everyone together because he believes that everyone together, they they can make the world whole again. They can bring back Kumandra. Uh, so he invites everyone from the chiefs from, and people from the other lands to come together and share fellowship and try to heal the division. Um, Raya ends up becoming friendly with uh, a child from one of the other lands but it comes to find out that this is a betrayal and this land is going to try to steal the orb, which leads to all the other lands wanting to steal the orb. The orb gets broken and the Droon are freed. And when the Droon attack, they turn people into stone. So we go uh, six years later and we find out that Raya is looking for uh, the last dragon, 
Uh, and she is trying to, because whenever she was talking with this child, um, who she befriended before the betrayal, this child had a map saying the dragon is supposed to be here, but we don't know which one, which one of these places on this map, uh, the dragon is supposed to be. So she's searching for the dragon and we are seeing like her last, after six years, we're seeing her last ditch effort. Uh, to find the last dragon. And I don't really want to say much more about it because I'll be spoiling some storylines right away. But, I mean, if you've seen the trailer, you kind of know what she ends up finding. She does find something near the beginning of the movie. Of course, you can tell what she's what she found considering the name of this movie. Um, okay. I want to talk about the obvious stuff first. Um, first, this uh, this movie is beautiful to look at. And I know this is going to be something you hear from every reviewer. The 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 animation is amazing. The colors are amazing. Uh, just the way it looks. If it needs to be happy, it's happy. If it needs to be sad, the entire landscape changes. And you can tell that, that we're not doing silly stuff right now. Uh, the movie definitely finds the right tone uh, in its atmosphere and its animation the entire time. You also have a really good voice cast in this. Um, Kelly Marie Tran, who, let's admit it. Okay, I wasn't the biggest fan of her in uh, Episode 8. Um, not because it's her and people were hating on her. No, no. I just didn't think her story was done very well. I think there was a good character there, but they just didn't do very well. It was nothing personal against her. She is, Kelly Marie Tran is fantastic in this. Uh, she displays the right emotions at the right time. You have this character that for six years, uh, her father has been, you know, taken away from her. And you don't know what her motivations are. She goes from, uh, to, from revenge to hope, back to revenge she just she's a very torn character and her character the entire journey is learning and her entire journey is struggling with her own motivations and i think tran really did a fantastic job in portraying this with just her voice um i'm not gonna say this is the weakest part of the movie but it just falls into uh, an overall problem I had with this one might look any problems I have with this movie are minor and they do not change how I feel about the movie overall. Uh, I think the movie got a little too silly at times, at least for my taste. Um, Aquafina, when we know she can do serious well, uh, we've seen her do serious well in, in movies. Um, in this, she's a little too silly, a little too much. Um, it almost feels like Eddie Murphy and Mulan kind of silly, right? And I, I don't know if that's what they were going for. And here's the thing, though. The, I'm not putting her down because she was too silly. Because when she needed to be serious, she did really well. Uh, I think the movie just got a little too silly at times. That being said, that was to keep the kiddos' interests. So I can't really put it down for that. It's, I think it's a fair trade-off. Because I think if this movie stayed 100% serious all the time, uh, kids might lose interest in it. Because they kind of need some some silly jokes here and there uh, to keep them entertained. I mean, we have uh, exploding fart bugs in the movie, right? Which, silly, yes, but you have to keep the kids' attention. Uh, so I think that's... Again, it, it's it's a minor nitpick I have with this movie that really makes me doesn't feel any differently. You have uh, these uh, little creatures along with a baby stealing things from people. Uh, they actually become an important part of the movie, but they're a little too silly. Again, it's for the kids. So anything that came out silly for me doesn't really affect the movie badly. I don't think it ruins the movie that it gets silly. It's just for my taste, I would have liked it to be just a tad more serious, but again, it doesn't ruin it. But so I'm not putting down Aquafina's performance. I just thought she got, a, got to go a little too silly, a little too much. Um, you have, uh, like Benedict Wong's character, I think 
of the, I won't say the minor characters, because he is an important part of the movie. Uh, Benedict Wong, who is Wong in Doctor Strange, uh, he plays uh, like a big burly warrior, and I liked him. Um, uh, Daniel Day Kim, who plays uh, Chief Benja, here's the thing about his character. You don't get to see him very much in this movie. Um, but boy, do they make you like him right away. So when you lose him again, this is right near the first of the movie. Um, when you lose that character, you're just like, you, you feel it right away. He did a really good job making you like him to where you wanted more of him. And then they don't give it to you. And that being said, if they didn't do what they did with his character, uh, you wouldn't have a story for this movie. So, um, and lastly, I want to talk about Gemma Chan as Numari. Uh, she is the, the child that Raya, uh, befriended and got betrayed by. And she plays an important part of this as well. And just like Raya, um, Gemma Chan plays this character just very complicated. Just like Raya, she's struggling with who she is and what she really wants. Uh, does she follow her mother's wishes or does she follow her own heart? There's, <clears throat> there's a lot of conflict between her and Raya in this movie. And when it comes to a head, it comes to a head. So again, the overall voice cast in this is, is fantastic. Okay. Now we're going to be talking about the plot a little bit. And this is where it might get a little spoilery. Um, again, if you don't want plot points spoiled, just see the movie. It's awesome. Um, all right. So there's an idea of this movie about unity. Uh, it starts at the beginning where, uh, chief Benja is trying to bring everyone together and he uses soup as a, like a metaphor. It's like, okay, here's, here's a soup. I'm going to put, you know, this ingredient from this land, this ingredient from this land. And it's all the different lands, the, you know, the five lands and, the ingredients make a, an amazing soup, right? And that's kind of the point of this movie. It's like, you have to come together to heal the world. Uh, and yes, you have these these Droon villains. And here's the thing, though. The Droon villains, when you find out where they come from, it makes total sense on how they have to be defeated. Um you have people gathering with Raya from different lands and they have to come together to destroy and defeat evil. Um, and the message of that is something I, it makes me wish Disney would have released this last year because in one of the worst years in the history or in modern history, anyway, you have, not just a country divided, but a world divided. And the message of this movie is about coming together and healing and working together to just stop injustice, to stop evil. And there couldn't have been a better message for this. When you realize what the movie's doing, you, you, you probably realize it maybe halfway through. I mean, cause you're all of a sudden you're like, wait, they gathered someone from this land and they gathered someone from this land. And it's like, huh, now we're getting this kind of fellowship going on. Again, it kind of reminded me of Avatar The Last Airbender uh, where you got people from different lands coming together to stop, you know, to stop evil from happening. And I thought that this movie did an amazing job at not only just, they didn't just force these people together, all these characters had their motivations. They either, you know, they, most of the time it's they lost someone and it made them, you know, the way it made them feel, they needed someone. And then when all these characters come together, they got each other's backs and they grow closer together. And again, when they work together as one, good things happen. Um, so as they're going on this mission, uh, to gather, the pieces of this orb, they're also coming together, not only trying to bring the orb together, but they're bringing the people together as well. 
And I just thought that that was a great message for now. No matter what your difference is, no matter who you are, where you came from, whatever. Together we're better. And I thought that was a fantastic message of this movie. You had all these characters from different lands coming together to save the world. And that's a fantastic message in my opinion. And I, I just, again, I, I kind of wish Disney would have released this last year. Cause I think like, again, this world could have used it. Um, you know, you have this movie with a great message with great characters, fantastic to look at. And, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I was getting a bit emotional watching this movie. It was it was just like, yeah. The way they pulled it together, it didn't feel forced. You know, they didn't you know, a lot of people nowadays are like and and, and I will admit that movie studios do do this sometimes. They force narratives uh into movies and you know, not once did I feel, other than some of the silliness, I do feel that some of the silliness was forced, but when it comes to character development and reasons these characters are where they are, uh, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some out there saying, well, you know, they just forced a girl as the, as the lead or whatever. Not once did I feel like the characters in this were forced into a position each character earned their place in this story and they all had to come together and they all had to work together and then the world could be saved from evil. And it's just a fantastic movie and I cannot recommend it enough. That is going to be all for this edition of Talkin' Movies. If you like what you've heard here, please subscribe to the Real Geno YouTube channel. Like this video. If you have anything to say about Raya and the Last Dragon, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Till next time, I am your host, the Real Geno, Gino Reynolds. See you later.